Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, we're going to be building our ALU. It's not going to be a big, fancy ALU with a whole bunch of functions. It's going to be something nice and simple. Because I don't really want to worry about having big, fancy functions for the ALU just yet. Because, I mean, this is our first ALU. We don't want something that's big, complicated. We can do that when we're building more complicated machines. Right now, this is something nice, simple and we'll get more complicated as time goes on. So, first off, let's go ahead and load the adder we built, because it's amazing, and paste it. I'm gonna go over here and paste it. I'm gonna make a free bit AOU. And the reason we're doing free bits is because it's just nice and simple. It's good for beginners, it's a good amount to deal with. It gives you enough information to do some interesting things, but it's, at the same time, small enough to not cause a huge pain when you're doing it. Okay, so first off, what we're going to have to do now that we have... Okay, so first off, what I just did there, I built three adders, and then I added inputs to them. Now I've taken the outputs, and now I'm going to invert them. That might seem a little weird, because this is supposed to be the addition portion. We are going to do subtraction, but this is the addition portion right now. And... The reason we're doing this is so we can put it through something called a muxer. So if we want to take out 5 from this, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then we want to uninvert it. And the whole reason for this, the, the reason that we're inverting and uninverting, so we can have this one little row of material. And by the way, in case you didn't know, your building material is completely irrelevant, as long as it's not something like glowstone or glass. So in other words, it can actually have redstone on it. And the reason we're doing this is so we can have little torches over every single one of our, our output rows. And what that will do is that will constantly give these little ro these rows power, and that means that these torches will always be off as long as this row is no, lo no longer receiving power. Why would we want to do that? It's all about controlling the output. If we do this, then we can always make sure that our output will never come out unless we say, hey, it will. But, and that, we do that by powering this row. And let's just make sure we aren't getting a bunch of jumbled outputs from all different parts of the ALU at once. We can have one output row, three output rows, excuse me, just one section of three output rows. We can control them using these. It'll make a little more sense in a bit. So first off, now we need to build a subtractor. So I'm going to go up here and use that to copy it. That's position 1, and position 2 is right here. Now I want to go up, and I want to copy it first, so copy, 1, 2. I want to go up, 1, 2, 3, 4. I want to go over, 1, 2, and now I want to paste it. So there we go. Now we have the basis of our subtractor. So, in order to make the subtractor, as we showed you in the last video, we'll have to invert input A and our output. We'll worry about input A later. Right now, we'll just worry about the output. So, you might say we already have our output inverted, and we need torches here. But this is, is our inversion for, or the muxer. We will need to do that separately from our output inversion. So, I'm going to make this our output inversion, and I'm going to make this part inversion for the muxer. So, I'm going to go ahead and just add another inverter right here. And this will just make it so that we have a nice bit of control over our output. We won't get anything out of it unless we have said give us an output. And these free inversions will ultimately result in one ultimate inversion. So there you go. That's the subtractor. Of course, you might say it's giving us an erroneous input right now because we haven't inverted B inputs, but we're going to be doing that right now. So, the next issue is we want to be able to get the same information from to input A at the bottom as input A at the top. So, for how do we do that? First off, I'm going to extend this out, I'm going to raise this up to place a torch under it, and that will be the inverter for or as a subtractor. And we can go ahead and do this for all input A's. If you want, you can go ahead and copy it. In fact, why not? I'll copy it. So, 
I'll just go here and stand here because it's a good landmark location. Copy. And it's input B, so I'm not going to put it there. Paste all inputs A's. And there we go. We now have it inverted for subtraction. So our inputs are good right now. We, we've completed subtraction effectively. Now input B is a little different because we don't want B to be inverted. So one thing we could do is we could do a one by one tower like this. And there's nothing wrong with that except if I post a torch here, it delays. I don't really want things to delay. So how we avoid this is the spiral staircase. I have yet to decide what the best way to do this for just two levels is, but I think this is one of the better ones. So I just go ahead and do like this, and it gets us a spiral staircase. And just practice world edit, I'll go ahead and copy and paste this. Even though you could probably just rebuild this, it's a small enough job. But oh well, I'm copying it, because I'm lazy. Let's copy, paste, and paste. I think we need one more at the bottom. Oh, I didn't copy all of it. Silly me. So we're, we're doing most of it by hand anyway, so it's not that important. And there we go, we've got input A's and input B. So I'm going to go ahead and put repeaters here. J just because. And in fact, to make things easier, or for later, I'm going to do it like this. So repeaters, nice, evenly spaced. Now let's do some math. So let's start simple. Four and so that's input A and three is input B. So we can get either well ad added or subtracted. So four plus three is seven. Four minus three is one. It's great. Now one last thing, we want all these to go onto a single wire. The way we do this is first off, repeaters in front of all these torches, and little block in front of all those repeaters, and now we put block here, just like this, little blocks like this, and drag the wire down, and there we go. Now, all of our outputs are on a single wire. So if I wanted to do this, now I'm getting them all on one wire, no matter what. That's pretty much how the AOU works. It's not that complicated, hopefully. This isn't the best design, it's not the fastest design, it's not the most efficient design, it's nor is a design I would really use, but it's nice, easy to understand, and it's, a really, it's really not a bad design overall. It's a pretty good design, in my opinion. So, that's what we're going to use for our first computer. This is our AOU, the first major part of the computer, and it is done. Thank you. See you in the next video.